morning, afternoon, night. This is We Are Not Prepared, and we are your hosts, Byron and Mark Ivy. And we know that you guys want to come back because we have had good conversation. This has been Ty, Byron, and Mark. We are not prepared. Just a little bit, though. I, I, <laughs> Ty's like, please, just a little. Does not being prepared cause, any, like, so this is an open question. So not being prepared causes me not in this this is my home. These are my people. I love not being prepared around my friends, right? That's fun. But when it's the, when I do experience anxiety in life, it is a bunch of the time, my own fault of not being prepared. Not being prepared. Yeah. Sure. We will, we will. Yeah. All right, Santiago. Thought we were already starting. No. Yeah, we were. Did we start it? Yes. <laughs> It doesn't matter. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we literally just said we are not. We just started. That was the, the show. end. That was okay. So that's the beauty of it. It could be the beginning or the end. It's like aloha. Okay. It's like a reel. You never know when it begins and stops. Yeah. Okay. We were talking about porn last time, and my dopamine then kicked in. We all had in, to take a break, and so I have no idea. <laughs> Correction: Mark had to take a break. <laughs> Well, so Ty Welch like the grape juice. Okay, is it white grape juice or red grape juice? I don't like grape juice in general, so. <laughs> now, if you had your choice to drink. Um, You're a Welch. I mean, which, I is, know, which yeah. is the best? That's the thing. I just don't like, it's weird. I like grapes, but Pick I don't one. like grape juice. Um uh, if I had to go, it's probably going to be white. White? Yeah. Quick, quick story about gr Welch grape juice. I was eating breakfast with my friend and his dad and the, the whole family. And he's chugging his Welch's grape juice. And the dad smacks him in the back of the head as he chugs it. Chugs, and he goes, don't chug your Welch's grape juice. It's too good to be chugged. And like just went back to eating. And we were like, what just happened? That's a little, anyway. little creepy there. <laughs> That is dark. It's too good to be chugged. It's a little dark. I don't know what it Thank means. Thank you. Starting us off with darkness. Let's go straight into panic attacks now. Which, um... Have you ever had a panic attack, Byron? Um... Have you ever been anxious? Do you know what anxiety... I get anxious. I get anxious. And I, I suffer from anxiety. So, mainly, I mask that because... Mask that because I use chemicals like drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think I ever got anxious until I sobered up. And then I go, oh. oh. That's yeah. what feelings feel uh, like. Yeah. So I was, t Ty and I were driving up from Tulsa, and he was just sharing, which if you don't mind, Ty, I'd like for you to share just what your experience of what, just a panic attack and dealing with anxiety. But as we were talking, you kept going, we're like, well, Mark, that's like, yeah, that's like, anxiety. Mark, hey, you have anxiety. <laughs> yeah, or like, I was like, what? <laughs> Mark know? didn't know how to identify it. And I was like, it it's like, it sounds like, like, like and so, I didn't go to school for this, but. It, it, and, I, and it just, and I know what he said. Like, so it, it's ca it caused me to kind of start, you, you know, letting my, listening a little bit to my body. I haven't done anything about it, but a little self-aware and a little scared of the fact that it was that that could be a thing, and I was just like, whatever about it. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, I'll take it away with the panic attack. Cool. Um, so we might make this into a two part because I don't know. I mean, that was a long car ride, and we didn't even get through it because your ADHD brain. Um, I had a lot of questions. You did. <laughs> we won't. For one, we won't let him ask that many questions. So uh, keep hopefully. keep going. Uh, you can only ask two. Yeah. Uh, two challenges. So panic attacks. Um, okay. So this year was the first year I've ever experienced one. Um, like I was telling Mark, I didn't really uh, deal with mental health stuff um, up until this year. Um, 
never really dealt with anxiety, never really dealt with like just panic uh, in that way. And so when I had my first one, I was actually on my way to Tulsa and uh, I, from where I remember now and kind of the, the journey I've been on, I've been able to put pieces together kind of in the moment. You're just kind of like, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know? And so that's kind of how it was. Uh, my heart rate like extreme, extremely went up, you know, had my Apple watch on and I'm like, I'm sitting here looking at it. I'm like, what is going on? What's happening? And I tell, I tell my wife, you're on the free, you're on the high, freeway. Right? Yeah, I'm on the turnpike. Right. And so, um, it's going up and I'm like, call 911. I don't know what's going on. I never experienced this. And, you know, I'm still conscious. Everything's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not in any pain. You know, when I look back at it, when I get out of the car, I'm just kind of walking around. Cause like, I think I'm dying right in the head, in your head. You're like, what's happening. Does I it think feel like a heart attack. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's like still going off and, um, I'm shaking all this kind of stuff and go to the hospital. You know, they tell me in the ambulance, you're not having a heart attack. You're, you're fine. Um, get to the hospital. They take, you know, the x-rays, they take the blood, they do everything, the EKGs, all that stuff. And they're like, no, you're fine. Has panic attack. I'm going to waste a question. Cause I can't remember if I asked this, has panic attack entered your mind at this point? Like, do you, has it even in on your radar of this is what it could be once they're telling you you're fine? Um, so I think at that point, so I'm in the hospital in the ER and I noticed every time it took my blood pressure, it went up. And so I'm like, but I'm fine when it's not taking it. And so I was getting anxious about my heart stuff going up. And so I eventually just took it off and just started walking around and they kind of, I could look back at it now and they were probably thinking this guy had a panic attack. There's, there's no trace of anything heart related. And so, um, I started doing some Googling of like all the symptoms I was having. And, uh, and that's one thing. Don't Google your symptoms. They should be allowed to say, we got a hunch that it could be a panic attack once they know that you're actually okay. Yeah. But at the same time, they can't diagnose right. a panic attack. Uh, so it's kind of like, and they, I could, t I could read between the lines that they were like, yeah. you didn't have a heart attack. You didn't have anything heart related. Um, they can't tell you it's anxiety. They can't tell you it's a panic attack. Um, and so I start looking at the symptoms and it's like, it's either panic attack or anxiety attack. And they're very like, Oh, there's Close a difference. Similar. Yeah. And so I don't want to get too ahead of it, but it's like panic attacks are out of nowhere. And that's what happened. But anxiety attacks are built up. Yeah. So anxiety would be like dwelling on a fear. Credit card bill. Yeah. Right. Or just it, the thought, like dwelling on the thoughts of like negativity, negative things going all the way blind. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, you feel the, <laughs> you, um, you, so you feel, um, slowly build, but <laughs> it slowly builds up. Right. Yeah. But God, my freaking heart's going nuts guys. What's going on? Well, it's like, aren't you almost like all the way blind now? And you weren't like five years ago. Sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the same. Um, it builds up. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so where panic is like panic is something from what I've learned is something that's truly built up over time. Anxiety is more like it built up like in the day, mm -hmm. like you had just all, like you couldn't handle everything else. Like you're overstimulated, you're overwhelmed, anxiety, boom. Panic is like, you know, yeah, you're in debt or your marriage is not going great and your kid is, you know, driving you nuts and yeah. job at the, uh, you know, is stressful. And it's like all those like negative compounds, yeah. you know, and then you just kind of like feel this sensation of your heart start like rapidly beating. Like you can feel it. Which is why it feels like a heart attack because you can feel 
you can feel the, um, from what I have learned, those are called palpitations. So you feel the palpitation um, in your chest, right? But what I've learned is you'll know it's a heart attack because you'll be in pain. Yeah. You And I wasn't, and that's the thing, I look back at it, I wasn't in any pain. My arm wasn't numb. My My back wasn't like hurting, you know. My chest wasn't hurting. I wasn't like I can't breathe. I'm sure it's hard to. I'm sure it's hard to check, make check off those boxes though. In the middle of right, and I and that's I the mean, thing, right? It could it, even if it happened again. Well, I don't know. Keep going. No, no, no. You're, no, you're right because it's like in the moment it raced. It was a racing heartbeat. It wasn't just like, hey, it's eighty. Hey, your pulse is ninety. Oh, your pulse is 100. No, it went from like 85 to 140, 145, 150. Yeah. Now, and you said that um, panic is stuff that's built up over time. Yeah. What was the stuff that was building up for you, you think? Um, so I think uh, debt was one of the things. Um, just seemed like stuff was breaking and we had like debt just kind of pile up. Um over time and um, you know, just the stressors of life, just uh, over expectations, um, poor diet, poor sleeping habits, you know, had sleep apnea. How much weight did you lose right now? I think I'm at two Oh five right now. And I was around, I probably fluctuated two thirty five, two thirty eight at that time. It's a lot of weight. It is a lot of weight. Yeah. And, you know, I, I did lose most of half of it due to anxiety and stress and all that, because when you have anxiety, you don't eat, you know, like some people, they do eat and they overeat, but I don't, I didn't. And so it's like, I felt like I had knots in my stomach, couldn't eat, um, you know, had to force myself to eat. So this is after, so the, the day I remember kind of, at, so you get back from the hospital and are, when's, have you, have you stopped being anxious? No, I'm at still one, shaking. At, at, so at no point you've calmed down? No, cause I didn't know what was going on. Um, and even when, after they told me, um, it wasn't a heart attack. I, cal- I mean, calmed down in the sense of like, I wasn't shaking as much, but I was still worried and still anxious. Um, you know, I went to counseling and we kind of like did some deep diving into like probably what brought that panic out. Um, could you work? So that first week, um, it was tough that first week I could not drive. Um, I, I was literally like fear driven. So is all that normal? Like post panic attack? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I drive fine. I mean, no, I'm saying like, is that a normal thing for someone to have a panic attack and just still be wrecked a week after? Um, that's wild to me. Yeah. Well, because some people's anxiety is, so extreme and the fear you got to remember fear is a part of that anxiety and fear can be crippling to people. I remember that first week there would be, you could feel the fear like in your body. You, it was like something gripped the back of your skull and you know, you felt the tightness. I've, you know, I felt, um, you ever, someone ever choked you? Yeah. Yeah that's, that's what fear feels like. It, it It's like, it's right there and you can't, you can barely breathe or you think you're Wait not. Wait a minute. Stop. Time out. Time out. Yeah. So yes. So has anyone ever choked you? Yes, they have. I grew up with two brothers. Okay. All we did is choke each other. Okay. I mean, I kind of assumed that. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. Did your brother choke you too? No, I was. I'm, I'm the older brother. So yeah. you choked. So. <laughs> what did you? Did you? What do you pause this for? I'm not pausing. I got in trouble for. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to stop because I mean, it's not something you hear of. You know, it's the kind of fear when you're being choked. Not everybody's. 
Okay, because I immediately think like the like. Well, I mean, like, I was thinking somebody around like both hands around your yeah. neck choking you. Right? I just know it's like being a headlock. You're, uh, that's, yeah. you're everything's suffocating. I mean, I, I suffocating. Did, can't, probably, get a, can't get a breath. You right. can't. I'm. It's a great analogy to me. <laughs> well, that's what it. Because what happens is like your your throat tightens up, and so you're not able to swallow and breathe as much. You're, you're able to breathe. You're able to swallow, but it feels like. Right. In the moment when you don't know what's going on, and this is the first time you're experiencing this, it feels like something's extremely wrong. Right? You could just choke me and then I'll get the feeling. That <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> that, that would not be a great scenario. We left a cliffhanger last time of like, stay tuned because we're actually going to get into, uh, La, or where'd you go? La La Palooza? Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so but we'll so we'll do another one where we do La Palooza and choking and choking me out. Yeah. Okay. So can I throw in a couple of thoughts here? Yeah, go for it. Just because I'll lose it if I don't. So one, have you seen the movie Band of Brothers? I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. No, it's World War II true story. So I mean, it's just these paratroopers. I think they landed with a hundred and forty-five. And by the time they finished, there were 65 of them left who, and I mean, either killed or injured. But it is just, I mean, it is mind-numbing, like the losing their friends and yes. the death and the shooting. Yeah. But I remember this one scene after they, had, they were in foxholes and a bunch of them had got bombed. And when it was over, this one soldier just kept, it was all over, but he kept like digging with his hands, trying to dig. And he was just, he was having a panic attack because his foxhole wasn't, wasn't deep enough. And he just kept, and he just was flipping out. And, and so that would make sense why he had a panic attack. Right. Because, I mean, it was just a very traumatic something that had happened. Yeah. I I believe because people the this is like a plug for possibilities, but I, I actually believe um that we have been through so much trauma as a as a world in the last four years. What about Israel? Well you, like all the stuff you're talking about, I'm just like yeah. It, Israel, but I mean you do COVID. I mean, there's people went to school that have never I mean, they didn't get to see each other until two years ago. And I mean, there's just so, you know, we had the election and then we, I mean, it's just so much stuff and so much trauma that has happened. Yeah. But we don't process any of it. And, and so we just are like all sitting on this powder keg of fear right. that we don't deal with. And uh, we just pretend like everything's okay. And so. Yeah. So um, something like, uh, I was able to dig out of just kind of, I'm one of those people like I like to just solve problems. Right. And so obviously in the ER, I'm trying to solve the problem already. <laughs> and I, I realized it, it was a, a culmination of a lot of things. Um, so, uh, and I was telling, you know, Mark, before this happened, you know, I had lost uh, a friend due to cancer um, and it was his, it, it, it was his second time. So it came back. Um, but it came back very aggressively, you know, was in the room when he, when he died. Um, and I don't think I dealt with that, that trauma. Um, and, uh, had another friend, she passed away, um, a few months, uh, not a few months later, but about eight, eight, nine months later. Um, but she, she had CF and so, it was one of those things like when you have CF, you're not expected to live as long. Um, how long she lived was already a miracle in itself. Were they in the church with you? Yeah. Uh, did we also say you're a youth minister? Uh, yeah, youth pastor. Top? Did we say that? Oh, no, I don't, I don't think we have. No. Yeah. No. That's good to know, too. Anyways, so I'm a youth pastor. Um, so don't take your clothes off. Uh, <laughs> God <laughs> made the clothes. I think we made the clothes. Though. We made the clothes. <laughs> we made the clothes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. he gave us the the. He tools. gave us the money. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> so, um, 
I, I dove. What, ch- what church? Uh, Paseo Church. It's right up here. Right up I mean, it, what is it denominational or? Um, like apostolic. Um, I don't, I don't know if you would know that or if Mark I knows do. that. I do. I okay, do. Cool. I do. Okay, cool. I do. I I actually enlighten me. What does it mean? That's a whole nother podcast, bro. Yeah, it's. Well, the next one will go theological. What an annoying denomination if you can't even give me a 60-second elevator pitch. <laughs> because there's, like, so I'm many of them. <laughs> there, that's true. That's, that's the true. issue. Um, but go ahead. Back to anxiety. We'll, yeah. we'll, um, we'll stay there. So a lot of those things, right, had had the debt, had friend pass away, had all these things happening, kids going to the terrible twos, right, bad sleeping patterns, bad eating habits. Um. And if you research, you know, all those things can be culminations of panic attacks, right? They can lead up to that. Um, And I think that's kind of where I was. One thing I had built up in my mind with all that was thinking I had a heart issue. Um, And it always kind of was in the back of my mind because my grandpa had a heart issue. Um, But it's like, my mom doesn't, my dad doesn't, my brother doesn't, you know? And so it's like, you have that fear, you know, as you're getting older in life, that it's going to be that, right? Um, Because I'm associating my friend who's in the same age, you know, range of, man, he passed away of cancer. I might, you know, have a heart attack at 30. Like all these like random irrational thoughts are coming into your head. And you start to believe them. And so when you have that panic attack, then you really start to believe that you have a heart issue. And you ever so, have intrusive thoughts? Um, what do you mean though? Because intrusive can be Children. anything. Like I'm going to yank this steering wheel as hard as I can to the right off the road. Uh, no, no. I, I mean, intrusive I'm put thoughts. This baby's foot in the garbage disposal. I think everybody has intrusive thoughts. People just don't want to say them out loud, which for some, for for most, it's probably a great idea that they don't. Yeah. You could have kept the whole garbage disposal. (laughs) We used to bathe our daughter in the, in the kitchen sink. I always, I would always think about like, what if her hand just. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, everybody has intrusive thoughts like that and they're, some will admit, like, you know, I'm, I can admit, yeah, I have intrusive thoughts, you know, but who doesn't, right? I, I mean, I just have learned that if you name the monster, it takes its power away. Right. And if I don't, I mean, it, the ones when we don't. That's a good one. You know, it's, it's hard. You know, our time is running, but there, I could ask you some questions. Go for it, yeah. Um, we have all the time. You have all the time. No, we have 10 more minutes. How can you tell? You can't even see. I can feel. <laughs> I feel. <Time>. You. <laughs> you can feel time. Yeah. I can feel time. But there's some questions I want to ask him, Go mainly because what has interests me with what you're sharing all of it, you know, like you being a youth minister is really what a wonderful um, you sharing your honesty is really what a light for uh, young people to be able to have access to you right. to talk because you do it in a way. Yeah, you do it in a you're getting so personal is why I was through like in the car ride. You're getting so personal to relate to really whoever you want to relate with but also informed enough to kind of organically weave it in to where like, you know what you're talking about too. Yeah. Well, I mean, a part of it was experience and then um, just reading, reading about mental health issues, reading about. But the other part of that, Ty, is that, I mean, your willingness to share about it. Right. And so, I mean, that takes a certain amount of courage to do that because you could read an entire encyclopedia, but if you keep that information and don't share it, it's not going to help anybody. True. Yeah. Um, I, even before the panic attack, I've just kind of always wanted to be a type of person that 
wants to be transparent and vulnerable and honest. Um, just because we live in a world that wants to hide behind a phone, a social media profile, wants to just... Which is why we ripped our shirts off earlier, by the way. Yeah, and which is why I didn't, if anybody's <laughs> listening. I don't need anybody coming and be like... Uh, For the record, it was a scar from a surgery. Uh, a it looked like mark. a fat uh, stretch mark to me across your stomach. So, but it was quick. So I'll give well, you that. You've been here for what? Four weeks? Yeah. And you're that's already enough, taking that's enough time off. to go blind. It'll, it'll get you. Please don't. Keep, already, keep going there. I'm sorry. I diverted myself. Mark's already Here's got his truth of thought. I want to punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? I have those. <laughs> There's some thought. Yeah, I'm not even saying that one. <laughs> so what are you doing? You made me anxious. Oh, did I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're conta- you're ang- you're you're contagious. Anxiety is not contagious. I know. Blindness is though. Yes. All right. What were you saying? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a- vulnerability, transparency. Um, yeah. No, I just kind of believe that because um, we just yeah we live in a world that we need connection and community more than ever. And front yard theory. And we're so divided as a people, not just in America. I mean, we're talking the whole the world. world. The whole world is at conflict and it's been a severe conflict for like the last five years. They're ra- they're raping women over there and then taking their phone, videoing it and posting it on their own Facebook page. Yes. That is going on right now. It's a modern day Holocaust. It is. Yeah. Yes. You may be. I mean, that's true. I've completely lost my thought. What I, I think is that we not only are disconnected from yes. each other, but I think we're connected, disconnected from the earth. And I mean, no part of us is integrated. You think um, we go to one place to work. We go to another place for God. We go to another place to work out. And uh, everything is separated. And that all used to be integrated Mm -hmm. into our lives were much more integrated. I mean, we worked on farms, and so we would get dirty. And uh, we would understand, like, cycles of the seasons and how things grow. How do you mesh the two? How do you mesh? How do you, you, like... Cause I see, I hear my, my dad, like people, your, your generation, and there's so much truth to it, but then how do we like, cause I want to raise, I feel like I'm doing a decent job, but like my daughter belongs barefoot outside running around. You know what I mean? It's the same kind of type of thing. Like she would, she would thrive in that world that you're talking about, but it's just not there anymore. Well, you have grass. Well, you know what I'm. You know what I yes, mean. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like uh, running through the like fields. There's not, a, yeah. there's not kids getting together for a for a wiffle ball game. All you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah, know. Uh, so, man, this this could lead into a huge another episode. But better, like better the, close off. the spiritual aspect of this, right? Yeah. Or even just oh, for sure. Um, the last few generations, a lot of this kind of mixes and, and molds together kind of like a melting pot in a way. Um, One, uh, their uh, technology. Technology is what's isolated us. But if you want to talk on the spiritual sense of this, you know, and I I don't know your belief and I don't know Mark's, but. You uh, know mine. I I mean, I don't, I don't know, no, but I might have a hint. Um, The belief that, uh, you know, Satan's still very much alive and, and roaming throughout this earth. Um, and his biggest thing is to destroy. And, you know, the Bible talks about how he's like a lion that's seeking to devour. Well, what do lions do and how do they usually get their prey? It's prey that's isolated. It's not just an, always in a pack. It's an isolated one, right? And so the isolation aspect 
is from what you're saying, like the disconnection, we're not connected as a people. Um, Instantly vulnerable. Yeah. We're like, we're not, we're not connected in our communities, but I will say this, Oklahoma city is a very great like city as far as community and connection. Good. Uh, That like, I feel that too. I always tell people, I don't like Oklahoma as a state, but I love Oklahoma city. Oklahoma city has something rich and it's got a heartbeat. It does. It's, it's got like connection. Port, Portland's got a heartbeat. Jesus saying it's from Portland. Portland's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I told Jesus traitor to our country. I mean, Seattle's disgusting. All those cities are disgusting, but their states are beautiful. You know, I that, you're, hold on. You know that you're saying uh, there's so much separation and stuff. And we have this man over here putting down Portland who has done nothing to him, the city of Portland. So anyway, go ahead. I mean, there goes all of our Portland. I love Portland. So I love Both their, of you guys. Hey, their coffee game is great. There goes Jesus. I mean, we've lost. I think I was just on the bad side. I'm really not getting that shirt. <laughs> I was on the bad side of town, I guess. Uh, but so. Guys, we have to wrap it up. Yeah. Man. Ty, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this back. has been very sure. Wait, I haven't invited him back yet. Oh, yes, sorry. we would love to have you back. Okay, cool. We would love to have you back. Good, because I, I appreciate your honesty and uh, your vulnerability and um, your willingness to put up with Mark. And you, you've been big time in me this whole podcast. To like, you've been letting speaking of the lion, okay, Satan. <laughs> you know, it's the whole time just so you know, don't. Two, you get one more question mark. One I more swear. question. This has been Mark Ivy, Ty Welch, like the grape juice that he doesn't like, and he prefers white. And speaking of who's not white, <laughs> Byron. Byron. Thank you, guys. Adios. Bye.